welcome. My name is Lexi Jong and here I like to talk about luxury makeup. Today we're going to be talking about the newest foundation from Guerlain, the L'Essentiel High Perfection Foundation. Now this is a soft matte formula and it claims to have 24 hour wear, which was tested by an instrumental test. So it is not just like a survey of people. And it also has SPF 15. Now, the Natural Glow Foundation from Guerlain was one of my favorites for quite a while, just up until just recently, actually. And I still absolutely love it. I think it's a beautiful formula and it works really well for my skin. So I was very excited to try the new Soft Matte Formula. Now, one thing to note is the Guerlain L'Essentiel Natural Glow Foundation has 16 hour wear and it has broad spectrum sunscreen of SPF 20. So just to note, this one's SPF 20, this one's SPF 15. Again, disclaimer, never rely on SPF in a foundation or makeup product for your sun protection. Always use separate sunscreen. So for me, the fact that these have sunscreen in them makes no difference. Now, both foundations are 30 milliliters and both foundations also use a majority of naturally derived ingredients. This new soft matte formula has 96% naturally derived ingredients. And I don't recall the percentage for the natural glow foundation, but it is similar, a similar percentage. So they're both using naturally derived ingredients and they're both supposed to, you know, help protect your skin over time. So the more you use it, the more skin protecting abilities you have from these particular ingredients. Some of the ingredients that have been highlighted are vegetal silk, which is used for the mattifying properties in the high perfection. Then we have white cocoa beans, which are supposed to offer some skin protection and you know just kind of helping your skin over a period of time. And there is also extracts from Terra and red algae gums. So those are some of the naturally derived ingredients that they are promoting. And as a matter of fact, Guerlain even promoted them on the side of their box. So this is the box the foundation comes in. And we have one side here with French and one side here in English. I purchased this from Selfridges. And currently that is the only place that has it available, but it will be coming everywhere very soon. Now this foundation is 30 milliliters. It comes in 30 shades and it is made in France. Now, as for application with this foundation, you know, this is the Guerlain Essentiel foundation brush that came out back with the Natural Glow. So I think this applies the foundation very well. Finger application also does well. You could use a sponge, I did not try one, but I did use a finger application and really used what little warmth I have in my hands right now during the winter um, to kind of help it melt into my skin. So I do wanna share that with you right now and then we are gonna go ahead and discuss my thoughts on this foundation. And I have been wearing this for over a week at this point. I've tested it many different ways. So I've tested it with different primers, without primer. I've tested it again with brush versus finger, again, also with and without the primers. So we'll discuss those results uh, after we go ahead with this short wear test here. So I'll see you in a minute. So I have the Surat Perfectionist Primer on my face. This is the Guerlain High Perfection. We're gonna apply it with hand. And I've actually already been wearing this foundation for about a week. So I've tested it with different primers as well as different application styles and no primer. So we're gonna do our wear test today with the Surat primer because that's the one that I liked the best out of what I've tried. So I'm sort of pressing this into my face and letting the warmth from my fingers, which you know, it's winter and they're only moderately warm, but letting it help it kind of meld with my skin. All right, so I have this much left from my first pump and this is gonna be it. So you can see, actually let's just on that a little bit better. So you can see what the finish looks like right now.
I'm gonna let this sit for a minute and then I will show you what it looks like in a couple minutes after oxidation has occurred. So it's been about two minutes since I applied it and this is what it looks like. There is a little bit of oxidation with this but it's not major and I think the finish looks pretty good. Okay, it's been four and a half hours since I applied everything today. I added one of the new Sisley blushes, but I didn't put anything else on my face. There's no powder or anything. And you can see how it's held up. I've blown my nose uh, quite a bit today. We've been outside in the freezing cold. So it's kind of gone from there. But you can see, this is usually where I get the most wear is right here. All right, and that's it for so far. It's now been just over 10 hours since I applied everything, and you can see how it is holding up. Again, it's worn off of my nose because I did blow my nose a few times today, so kind of wipe that off. But I think overall, it has held up really well, and you can see this is usually what I, where I get some wear, and... You know, I don't have any like patchiness or anything wearing through. I have had some fading in the cheeks. You can see more redness peeking through than before. And keep in mind, I do have blush on, but obviously it's not right here. So uh, this is how it has worn off, but the fading looks to be pretty even. So at least there's that. I hope that was helpful. Typically I apply my foundations with a brush and I personally really like to apply this foundation with either the Guerlain L'Essentiel Retractable Foundation Brush, which is this. Again, it's called a retractable foundation brush, but it doesn't technically retract. It just has this that goes over it and it comes with this little cover. So if you're somebody who travels a lot, I think this is really handy to throw in your bag. And I personally really like this brush. I think the size is great. And I don't remember, but I believe it's like charcoal and bamboo fibers here. So you're not supposed to wash it very often. I know I wash mine more than is recommended, but it's a really nice brush. So for application, personally, I typically use a brush, either that or the Coyoto Fupa, the old version was the FUPA 03. The new one is the F04. I really like them. They're actually both dirty at the moment, but those are the brushes that I typically like with this and the natural glow foundation because I like to have kind of like a buffing effect, but I want some flex and give with the bristles. Now I wanted to show you the finger application with this foundation because I really think that it gives a beautiful finish. And if you're looking to get a little bit more coverage, I do think it's a little bit easier to kind of pat it in and do this in small layers and use the warmth from your fingers to kind of melt it in. If you use a brush, you know, it's you can easily just go ahead and press your face afterwards as well. But I do really, really appreciate the finish with finger application with this particular formula. I think it just, you know, I think it looks slightly better. That being said, it's not a huge difference. And most of the time I will be using a brush just because I don't really like getting it all over my fingers. So it's a personal preference, but I definitely wanted to share with you how beautiful it actually looks and it performs with the finger application. By the way, today's application was done with the Guerlain L'Essentiel foundation brush and I do think it is a lovely finish with the brush as well. Now, as for my thoughts on this foundation, as I mentioned, I've been wearing this for over a week and I tested it first with the Victoria Beckham primer. Now, this is a moisturizing primer and I believe there are no silicones or anything like that in there. However, it is kind of a dewy kind of primer. It feels like a, you know, a lightweight face lotion. This did cause separation. So when I used the Victoria Beckham primer, within about an hour, I started to notice some separation. You know how you can kind of see like the like little circles of foundation all over. So it looked fine from a distance. It wasn't like horribly separating, but if I got up close, I could definitely see the separation of the 
foundation and the primer. And so I really think that those two are not very compatible. So if you're using a moisturizing primer, you know, I, I would definitely take a look at what you're using. Now, Guerlain also has a primer that came out last summer in this line, this Licencia line. I have not tried it. I have heard it as mattifying, and I think it would work really well under this foundation because I have been using the Surat Perfectionist Primer, which if you've watched my channel, you know that is definitely by far my favorite primer because it just works so beautifully over sunscreen. I could put on the super greasy sunscreen, you know, something that you would wear like for a full day at the beach. I can put that on, let that sit for a few minutes, then put the primer on top of it. And my skin has none of that texture to it that you get with the sunscreen. None of that like stickiness, greasiness looking or anything, yet it doesn't dry out my skin. So the Surat Perfectionist Primer is by far my favorite. It is slightly mattifying and it works really well under this foundation. So today I do have the primer on. And as I mentioned, I have tried the foundation with and without the primer as well. And it works really well without any primer. So if you don't use a primer, just know that this foundation does work really well. Even after putting on my skincare and using a regular like lotion, I used the Augustinus Beta Rich Cream. I waited about 10 to 15 minutes before applying my foundation. I did not experience any separation with that. I also have tried the Sisley All Day All Year Foundi um, Moisturizer underneath this. And again, I did not experience any separation. So whatever it is in the Victoria Beckham one that is causing the separation is something that was not present in either of those. So I'm not sure exactly what it was, but I did wanna note that without using a primer, it still works well over those particular skincare items that I used. Now, that being said, does the primer extend the wear? I did not get to 24 hours wear. However, I do think that it looks slightly better in the areas where I do experience wear. So in the wear test, you could see like a little bit wearing off here. And I have to admit, I did have some fading in my cheeks, but a lot of that is probably also due to my daughters who kept kind of like rubbing up against my face with their clothes and stuff. So, you know, there is some of that was due to that. However, I did do some other wear tests that I did not film. And, you know, there's a little bit of fading, not as much as was evident in the clip that I showed you, but I do experience wear right around here. I have to say though, I did not experience any gathering of foundation in the fine lines. So that was good, but I did notice, you know, that it started to wear off a little bit in this area. And using the Surat primer underneath did extend how long it took before I started to notice any signs of wear there. So long when it an answer there. But overall, I have to say that this foundation, I really, really like. So I think it is a beautiful foundation. It gives you a really nice soft matte look. It is comfortable on the skin. As a matter of fact, you know, you can set this with powder, but you don't have to. I actually think it looks a little bit better on me without the powder because extra powder can make it a little bit drying depending on how you apply it. So I really like it without the setting powder personally. But one of the things that I wanted to note is just the way your skin feels. You know, a lot of times when you're using a matte foundation, it starts to feel a little dry or, you know, maybe a little like papery. Whereas this really just feels like you have absolutely nothing on. So when I have sunscreen on and then I put this on, it does mattify it to the point where it feels like my skin without anything on it, but it never feels dry. It never feels tight. And honestly, it's just it feels smooth. It's kind of like when you take a blurring primer and you put that on and your face feel has that like smooth look to it. That's what this feels like on the skin. So I really, really like this. Now I have to say finish wise out of the foundations that I have and love, it is fairly similar to the Clay de Peau Radiant Matte Foundation. Obviously, this one doesn't have quite, a, you know, that one does have a touch of radiance to it. This one is going to be 
it's really kind of like a frosted glass <laughs> on top of your skin. That's what it makes me think of. So I think this bottle is a very good representation of what it does because it does give you a little blurring and that's kind of what it looks like on your skin. But finish wise, I do think that this and the Clay de Peau are fairly similar. So if you've already invested into the Clay de Peau, you know, there's no need to rush out and get this. However, this is a better price point than the Clay de Peau. So if you have not purchased that and it was something you were interested in, this might be something that you would like to look into instead. Now, as for wear time, the recorded wear test did not go super long. However, I have worn the foundation for about 16 hours. And when I have gone that long with the foundation, again, I noticed wear here and a little bit on my cheeks, but overall it looks pretty much like what it did at the end of the recorded wear test. So there, it really doesn't get worse between hours like eight and 16 on me. It stays the same. And I did that with and without the primer as well. So both with and without the primer, it lasts at least 16 hours at the level that you saw in the recorded wear test. Again, this claims to have 24 hour wear and that's based on an instrumental test. I did not go that far. So hopefully this was helpful though. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some foundation swatches and just so you know, this foundation, as pretty much any foundation, there is a little bit of oxidation with this. So we're gonna apply the swatches and I will also let it sit so you can see the color after a little while. All right, so we are starting with the Guerlain L'Essentiel Soft Matte and I have shade 00N. And we'll just kind of buff that a little bit here at the edge. Now, this is the Natural Glow Foundation in shade 00N. And you can see that mine is starting to get a little bit older, a little bit drier. I'm actually running out in my bottle. That's how much I like this one. This is actually a foundation that I have almost used up. So you can see that between the two of them, the 00N in the Natural Glow starts off slightly deeper. And we'll look at them after oxidation. So this is the Clay de Peau Radiant Cream to Powder Foundation in Ivory or I-10. Chanel Le Beige Healthy Glow Foundation in BR-12. Cogendo Aqua in 002. Cogendo Moisture in 012. Shantakai Future Skin Gel in Alabaster. Get a little bit more in there. Shantakai Future Skin Gel in Porcelain. And Suku the Cream Foundation in 110. So I'm gonna let these sit for a minute and then I'll come back and show you an oxidation test. So it's been about five minutes. I'm gonna show you a fresh application of the 00N. This is the soft matte. So you can see that there is gonna be a little bit of oxidation. And these are all foundation shades that I wear. So I have to say that overall, this one in 00N, it works well. And I actually, you know, it's a little bit lighter than the one in the Glow, which personally I really like. Unfortunately, these are the lightest they have, the 00. And, you know, it wouldn't, wouldn't be a bad idea for them to go slightly lighter because I know there are people with lighter skin tones than I have. But I have to say that I find the soft matte formula to be just a tad lighter than the glow. And you can see that it's slightly more neutral as well. So just one more time with the foundation swatches. This is the Guerlain L'Essentiel High Perfection in 00N, wet swatch, dry swatch. And then we have the Guerlain L'Essentiel Natural Glow in 00N, 
Clay de Poe Radiant Matte in I-10. This is the Chanel Le Beige Healthy Glow in BR-12. Cogendo Aqua in 002. Cogendo Moisture in 012. Chantecai Future Skin Gel in Alabaster. Future Skin Gel in Porcelain. And this is the Suku the Cream in shade 110. Now let's just finish up with a few other notes. Just wanted to note that when you are applying this foundation, as I mentioned, there is a tiny bit of oxidation, but it's not that much. And once you apply it, I do think that you're going to look your best after it sits on your skin and kind of warms up with your skin for a little bit. So if you've got warm hands, go ahead and press it into your skin. That gives it a beautiful finish. It also helps you know, make sure nothing is sitting in any fine lines or anything like that. You're kind of melting it in a little bit. But if you're somebody who doesn't like to touch your skin, if you just wait like 20 minutes or so, the warmth from your skin itself will help it melt in as well. So I think that the foundation does look a little bit better on your skin after it has been on there for a little bit than it does with the initial like first five minutes of application type thing. In summation, I think this is a really great foundation option. I really enjoy this one. I'm glad I picked it up. It's definitely one that I plan on using a lot in my rotation. And I have to say that I just, I really love the texture of this. Now, again, it is winter time right now, so I don't know how well this holds up in heat and humidity. I'll definitely test that when we get warm weather again, but right now for being inside and for the cold weather and everything it is holding up really really well it gives a beautiful finish it does not accentuate any dryness on my skin and if i had to guess just based on how this reacted with the victoria Becker, beckham primer i would say that this probably isn't going to be best suited for oilier skin types I would think that the mattifying properties would look good for a little while, but you wouldn't get the full longevity of it. So that's a, a guess based on my experience with a primer. However, if you have normal to dry skin, I think that this foundation is a really nice choice. And even combo, I think you could work, this foundation will work well with combo. I do, I would recommend using a mattifying primer in areas where you have a lot of you know oiliness peeking through like your t-zone or setting that section with powder but that's just again um just an estimated guess on my part so i hope this was helpful and if you have any questions or comments please be sure to leave them down below and thank you so much for tuning in i will see you very soon have a great day and don't forget to hit subscribe stay safe and healthy